Hey guys, welcome back. So with this one, we're getting into Avengers Assemble Alpha, which continues the story from Avengers Forever and brings it back together with the 2018 Avengers series. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so in our last talk, we saw the Avengers 1 million BC run into the modern day Avengers who had just made their way back in time to the prehistoric era, which is where we're picking up from in this video for the most part. But before we get into that, I wanna take a moment to talk about why the current day Avengers are here, how they got here, as well as the situation of the star brand baby turning into the star brand old lady, because a few of y'all have been asking about that. So I wanted to go over it really quickly because this is the last part of three separate pieces that are all coming back together now. Because this all began in the 2018 Avengers series by Jason Aaron, where at the time, at around issue 54 or so, when the Death Hunters story concluded, which we covered on the channel and I got that link below. But when Death Hunters concluded, the story split with one side of it continuing in the 2018 Avengers series and the other half of this branching off into Avengers Forever, which is the story that we've been following all the way up to this point with the Deathlock and Tony Stark from Earth A18, the Ant-Man, assembling the multiversal Avengers after traveling throughout the multiverse, which like we saw not too long ago, this part's done. The multiversal team is assembled. And as for the other two, first we got the Avengers 1 million BC. Their story was covered within a couple of one shots as well as in the Avengers series, much of which we've covered already with these guys assembling and disassembling and now meeting the modern day Avengers, which takes us to number three because for the modern day team, they've been doing quite a bit of time traveling as they went after Mephisto, who was trying to unravel the Avengers past, which introduced the modern day Avengers to countless other heroes along the way, with them knowing that ultimately they need to save the Avengers 1 million BC, with this team being the cornerstone to the birth era of what would later be a world of heroes, which again made it a priority to protect the Avengers 1 million BC at all costs. So during their chase for Mephisto, Brandy Selby, the star brand baby, gave this fight everything she had, going constantly without sleep, cause she knew the more she used her powers, the faster she would age. So she just figured if she's not gonna live long, then she's gonna try and make the biggest impact within the short amount of time that she has, regardless of Carol Danvers trying to tell Brandy to sit this one out entirely. Cause none of them really knew how far she would age or how far Brandy could actually go until her body eventually would give out. And when the time came when Brandy got her shot to go after Mephisto, she exerted her full power, which was precisely what the team needed to take them one million years in the past. But unfortunately, this came at the cost of Brandy Selby aging rapidly, even though she was just an infant a few weeks ago. And now all of this brings us up to speed with the modern day Avengers finally finding the Avengers 1 million BC. But for the prehistoric heroes, they're not quite sure exactly who the modern day heroes are or why they're here for that matter. And at first they're a bit cautious because if you guys remember, Mephisto already told Agamotto about the multiversal masters of evil who have hunted down prehistoric Avengers on multiple worlds. But before Agamotto can get to say that he senses that they're already here, he's immediately attacked by someone causing him to just burst into flames which then causes the other prehistoric Avengers to believe that it's the modern day Avengers who are doing this, which is an assumption that is instigated by Odin because he sees that they have a Phoenix on their side. And because of his recent falling out with the Phoenix, Odin believes that this is some sort of retaliation, which makes sense if you try to look at it through his lens. So it's not difficult for him to convince his allies to let loose on these guys. And once the fight starts, it gets wild quick because you have both Captain America and Thor versus the star brand who gives them a run for their money. And of course, Odin, he goes for Maya because she's the modern day Phoenix, which then has him fighting against her and Valkyrie. But with all of this going on, I kind of got mixed feelings about it because on one hand, the logic is there for these two teams to be fighting. But on the other hand, it's so predictable and it happens so often when different teams or different heroes meet up, which just makes it one of those tropes that can be necessary at times. But when it happens, I'm now I'm just like, it better be good because this one, it has its moments. But what I appreciate about it most is that it doesn't hog up the whole story or even the whole issue for that matter. But while everybody was Kung Fu fighting, the Iron Fist made her way over to Agamotto, who is in excruciating pain at the moment but he's able to at least let her know that these visitors are not the enemy. So she asks him, then who is? 
which is a question that now takes us to another fight that's happening nearby. But before we get to that, we head back to just moments before the modern day Avengers and the prehistoric Avengers got into it, and we make our way to the Avengers Tower at Infinity's End, where we find the Avenger Prime, whose identity isn't quite revealed yet, because later on we're going to get into the whole backstory. But for right now, with us seeing Avenger Prime make his way from Infinity's End to Earth 616 in the distant past, it's done in a way where it's like this guy's identity is still a mystery. But of course, with one look, I know, you know, we know who this is. But for the sake of the story, in the moment, I'm just going to pretend like this is only Avenger Prime, because when we do get to his backstory, it's really good. But when he gets here to Earth 616 in the prehistoric past, Avenger Prime is suddenly approached by Mephisto. And at first, Mephisto's just talking like Earth 616 is already his, because he's been putting in work here for some time, even at this point in the past. So he asks Avenger Prime what brought him here to his Earth. And Avenger Prime tells him that he came here to watch Mephisto lose, like he usually does, only for Mephisto to then point out that it doesn't seem to be that way, with the Masters of Evil succeeding and taking over countless worlds across the multiverse, which has now caused Avenger Prime to leave the protection of his tower. So Avenger Prime just lets Mephisto know that he's very capable of protecting himself and those other Earths weren't 616 as he looks over the ledge and whispers, Avengers assemble. And like we'd seen down below, that's something that's kind of a work in progress. But for now, just know that the Avenger Prime, he's the one who's calling and pulling the Avengers together as opposed to Mephisto who's working on pulling them apart. Which now brings us up to speed with the two fights that are happening simultaneously. Cause it's here when Mephisto tries to stab Avenger Prime in the back where the two of them start to go at it. And Avenger Prime tells Mephisto that he's not worried about taking him on one on one. Cause he knows Mephisto's not powerful enough here to overwhelm him. And regardless to what happens here today, the Avenger Prime has assembled a team far greater than anything Mephisto could imagine. So Mephisto's like, yeah, okay, okay, you got some good points. But who said anything about fighting one on one? as another hand comes out from behind Avenger Prime, stabbing him in the back, and the Council of Mephistos just come rushing in from every angle. Meanwhile, down bottom with the Avengers finding the other Avengers, both Thor and Odin decide that they have had enough, and it gives us this moment where the two of them send their Mjolnirs flying at each other at the same time, which is kind of funny when you think about it, because I can't help but to imagine both hammers racing towards each other, and in the last moment before impact, both of them are just kind of like, hold up, Wait a minute, because they're both Mjolnir. But either way, this causes a huge explosion, knocks everybody out, except for Agamotto, who's finally free from his torment. And for a moment, he's just walking around and looking kind of like, wow, so this is how the world's gonna end, with heroes fighting heroes. And at first, it seems like he's talking to himself until he tells someone, you must be loving this. And it's right here where we see that he's talking to the doom above all. And right away when this doom shows up, there's just this looming feeling that something really bad is about to happen. And he doesn't waste any time getting down to it, cause Doom asks Sakamoto if he knows how many Sorcerer Supremes that he's been through prior to him. And before Agamotto could even guess the answer, Doom is just like, neither do I, to only then bind up Agamotto and take his eyes out. Cause the Doom above all did not come here to play. And he tells Agamotto, tonight I dine on your eyes, and then your world entire. As he turns around and sees the star brand approaching, and for a moment it almost seems like he forgot that he was holding Captain Marvel, so he just tosses her over to the side, and he charges after Doom, who is just like, impress me. And Doom Supreme tells Starbrand, he's got all the power of the stars, but he's just the man on the inside. So he looks inside the star brand, where he sees that he's burdened with man's sentiments and memories. He has a man's pain of loss, a weak man's rage, so he tells the star brand, this is why you fail, only for the star brand to break out of his hold, grab his head, and tell the doom above all, no, that is why I smash. So doom then calls for the bone bending spirits of the winding way, as he tells the star brand, no one smashes doom. And after this, when the other Avengers start getting up, they just see this big red ball with veins popping out, rolling down the hill. And as it turns over, they see the star brand's face on it, which is not only wild, but the doom above all, he uses this kind of like an intro to his speech. Cause next, he just hovers over the Avengers, telling them how he's conquered so many other worlds with heroes stronger than them, who all believed that they stood together, they could save their worlds. And they all believed this up until the moment where they died at our feet. And as he says this, the other masters of evil then step into the frame. And with them stepping in, it's like, we already know. These guys aren't here to play fight like the Avengers was just doing with each other. These are some killers. 
And since the last time that the modern day Avengers have seen the Masters of Evil, from then up until now, the multiversal Masters of Evil have collected quite a bit of XP. So now, this marks the beginning of the battle for Dawn. And going back to Mephisto, we see that his variants have placed a number of knives in Avenger Prime's back, as 616 Mephisto lets him know that this Earth is the last piece, and it must fall. And he also goes on to tell Avenger Prime, for the second time, that he was foolish for leaving the Watchtower at Infinity's End, but this time he says it not because the Avenger Prime left, making himself a target, but this time he says it because the Avenger Prime left the tower, unprotected as Mephisto then opens a portal to Infinity's End, and he tells Avenger Prime, this time, the devil gets the garden, as we see the Council of Mephistos are already there. And so now real quick, I wanna give a special shout out to all the patrons, thank you guys for all of your support, and for anyone who's new here, who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below, where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.